yesterday, no, today, I was riding over here with Betty. And you ready? You got it? We going? Nice. Um, so today I was riding over here with Betty, and I was telling Betty, well, Betty was saying, okay, Betty, do you mind if I share what you said? No. <laughs> Anything you've ever said to me, you don't mind if I share it? Uh, you don't know what I'm depends gonna share. on what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't the tell me we were doing out. <laughs> um, it's about teaching. So is that cool? That's fine. All right. I don't um, mind. Betty's an open book. Mostly. So <laughs> well, pages though are blank. Um, or they were written in invisible ink. Um, so Betty and I were driving over here today, and she was telling me about how. Um, she's been to trainings and she's like, you know, she's done a lot of like reading on the internet and stuff like that. Anybody like done a lot of reading about this kind of teaching on the internet? Okay, anybody like your family is like, what happened? Did you join a cult? <laughs> <laughs> At IFLT, like in 2016, I literally met this woman whose boyfriend told her it's the cult for me. Mm -hmm. So she picked the cult. She broke up with him. Wow. Wow. CI. I think relationships that shouldn't have started since 2016. I know all the time. I go, what am I doing research? She goes, what? I go, it's it's so addictive. Like I need a pro I have a problem. I do too. That's that's all I'm on it for. I know. I used to be I used to hate Facebook. I used mm -hmm. to think it was really dumb. Mm -hmm. Um and then like around 2016 I started like doing stuff on teacher groups, and then that's all I use it for. Yeah. 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 And kids don't even use Facebook anymore. No. But if Facebook ever shuts down, I'm going to be like, my whole business is gone. <laughs> Nobody to talk to. Um, so anyway, Betty and I were talking about that, like, kind of, kind of like a hamster wheel. Like, you get on it, and you're like, you're getting so excited, and you're always, like, chasing the new thing, right? Mm -hmm. And there's, it gets so overwhelming. Yes. Like, there's so much stuff out there. And then sometimes people have told me, lots of people have told me this, that they go to a conference or um, even like a two or three day workshop or something or a one day workshop and they leave and they're like, I have all of these ideas, but like how do I make it into like a system that mm -hmm. actually like mm -hmm. keeps me calm mm -hmm. so that when I find something new, I know where it fits in to like my plan. And uh, so Betty was saying like, oh, I, you know, that's a, a big problem for me. I'm, I'm addicted, I spend so much time doing this and, it, and then it wears me out. And, and Betty actually said she's gonna take a, take a sabbatical from some of her, uh, yep. some of her addiction. Mm. That's good. Betty is, she's a yogi. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping in balance, you know, and, and meditating is staying calm. So um, I might not be able to make you guys all into yogis as well, but um, I do wanna, sh so then Betty was saying, like, what we really need is like a way to like, have a structure and have something that can keep us like organized mm -hmm. and so that we, we don't always feel like every day is like a bunch of new stuff. Anybody feel that way? Like, yes. like your kids kind of walk in and they're like, what are we doing today? Mm. Right? Um, so here's another like tip from Teachers College. I would never be the person that I am today for Teachers College. My colleague Mimi told me about Teachers College in 2006 mm -hmm. when I first started teaching and it changed my life. Like I went there in 2007 and ever since then I've been a totally different teacher in all the subjects that I teach. So um, one thing that I learned when I went to Teachers College is this idea, I don't even know if this is how they say it, but this is how I think of it. The idea of like novelty within a predictable routine and structure. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in reading and writing workshop, like um, it follows a really predictable structure every day. They, they are very regimented at Teachers College. Um, there's, there's steps that you follow for like every part of the lesson. So for instance, a mini lesson. You have a mini lesson every day. It's like 10 to 15 minutes long. And there's five parts to every mini lesson and you practice and practice and practice. So there's always like, the connection. It's like a real world connection or like a story. You'd be like, oh, writers, last night I was watching TV and I noticed that there was this character and they were doing this. When, when, they, when they were giving their internal monologue, like it was like just, you, they, were, they were thinking, but they weren't talking, like, but you could hear what they were thinking and it really helped me get to know them. They were thinking about this, they were thinking about that, and I knew that they were gonna do this because of what they were gonna do. And then there's like the teaching point. So then you go, so writers do that too. So I want to teach you that like when you're writing, you need to put in your, your characters, like, you know, inner thinking. See, when I start saying character, like, whenever I start teaching about teachers' college, I just start talking like that. <laughs> so you need to put in your characters inner thinking. Um, and then there's like the, the modeling part. So, so watch me, there's the same language that you say. You say, writers, I want to, like at the beginning to open it up, you always call them writers or readers. It like fills them up, right? You know, there's some concept. Like, I'm a writer. My teacher says I'm a 
writer, writer. Um, and then you always say like, let me teach you that writers do this. And then you always say, so watch me. And then you like model it. And then you always say, now you try. So there's all of these, so it's like, you know, then they try it together, it's like guided practice, and then you release them. And you always say this, today and every day, writers, I want you to remember that when you put in that inner thinking, it really helps the, the reader to know your character better. So now you go try that in your writing. And then they always say, off you go. And it's like this magical moment. Like you train your kids, like when I say off you go, you go off. <laughs> and you write, you know, and within 15 seconds, you know, we should all be scribbling away because we don't want to waste any time. So when I learned that structure of a mini lesson, and you might think like, well, that gets a little boring. You know, you're always saying, off you go. You're always saying, writers, can I teach you this? Or today, I want to teach you this. And you now you try. But it's actually really good for kids because they know what to expect. So once they do a few mini lessons, it's like, here's what we do. I. And they don't even seem to notice that like you say the same language all the time. It's like, I don't know, anybody ever go to like church? <laughs> you know how they always you know how they always kind of do the same stuff all the time. Like first you come in and then they like give the greeting and then you like sing the first hymn, you have to stand up, then you sit down. I think they just get you to stand up and sit down so you don't get bored and fall asleep. Um, anybody Catholic? Because that the cat my husband's Catholic, it's like up and down and up to the thing in the front, and you come back, and it's a lot of exercise. But it's always the same. You know, it's the same structure. But within the structure of a mini lesson or church, there's different stuff that happens. Sometimes it's the exact same. It's kind of like a formula, you know, and sometimes it's, it's different. So having that structure and then having a place to put the novelty within the structure is a really powerful place to teach from for us and also for the kids. For us, it gives us like the next thing that we're gonna do. We, we feel comfortable that we're gonna like if we have like a cycle that we can go through that's like a structure, then we know like we're gonna hit these different things. But you can't do the same thing all the time, that gets boring. So then, you know, you're doing it with different content. So like in a mini lesson, the structure's the same, but every day you're teaching them something different. You're telling them a different connection. You know, like I just told you one about like, I was watching TV last night. Well, you might be like, I was talking to my best friend, you okay. know, and she was telling me about this thing that happened to her, but all I really wanted to know was like how it made her feel. <laughs> So, you know, writers do that too, right? I was so curious about, I, I knew all this stuff, you know, it was kind of boring, but like, I was like, I can ask you, like, how'd you feel then? How'd you feel then? What'd you think then? So I really want to know what's happening. So it's like the same part of the lesson, that connection part, but the content is new. You're like always looking for a new story. To bring to the and then when you're modeling, it's always a new, you know, you're working on your writing in front of the kids, but you're writing something different every day. So even though there's these same parts, there's different contents, so but it stays fresh. But for, for me as a workshop teacher, I don't have to like reinvent the wheel every day and it like frees me up to just focus on like bringing really high quality content to the kids. Because I don't have to think like, what am I gonna do first? What am I gonna do second? I know, and I get my brain into the habit of looking for those connections in my normal life. Because I'm like, oh, tomorrow I'm gonna be teaching them about inner thinking. I need to be looking for something that is gonna be fresh and fun to share with them from a movie or my real life or a book I'm reading or something or conversation I had or maybe a poem or something. So I'm like, I've got that structure and I'm training myself to like work within that structure. So it calms me down and that's the benefit for me. And also I know that I'm like doing good teaching because the structure is really strong and it like leads them through a lot of different like modalities. Like first they're listening to this real world connection, then they're watching me write, then they're working with a partner, and they're writing with their partner, then we're sharing out, then they're writing on their own. So it's like, you know, an exercise class. You warm up, but you do different warm ups every day. Then you do cardio, then you do some strength, but you don't do the same exact exercises every day because I'll get boring and you would only like, you know, use one muscle group. But like through the course of the week, you know, if you have a robust exercise system, you're gonna have like arms day, legs day, abs day, glutes day, butt day, that's glutes day. Um, so that's the benefit for us. And then the benefit for the kids is that like they know what they're gonna do when they walk into your class. Like it becomes a routine that's comforting for them, but yet it's also like ever changing. So they can kind of settle down a little. 
when I first started doing this kind of teaching, it was like a smorgasbord of crazy, like, circus animals every day in my class. I would, like, and this was before, like, this was in, like, 2005, okay? So <coughs> they, these Facebook groups and stuff didn't even exist. There was this thing called the More TPRS List. It was, like, an email list. Anybody on there? So it's still there, but it's kind of quiet now because I think, like, Facebook and stuff and blogs and websites have really taken off. But even then, I was like overwhelmed with new ideas. And every time a new idea came down the pike, I'm like, I guess I should be trying that. Um, and my kids every day, would kind of, they were kind of discombobulated. And, but yet I was teaching my language arts class the way teachers college taught me to teach. And so like, that was always super calm. And then my French class was like a crazy mess. Fun, but great. So I had that training and I just kind of started thinking like how can we simplify things for us to have that structure and then inside the structure novelty so I'm really happy to share this with you that's why we're filming it because I've never this is probably like the it's gonna be the best time I've ever explained this I just know it so I'm doing it for you Betty because <laughs> when, when I taught you the first time at Cascadia I didn't have I mean this was kind of formulating in my mind but I hadn't quite like fleshed it out and then I taught two more years and trained a bunch of people and figured out how to explain it so Betty this one's great <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so I'm gonna take you back a uh, year and a half to uh, 2000 17 in the summer and I was like driving around the country with Ben Slavic like all over the country and we were driving from one town to another I forget where it was it was on this terrible highway it was in Ohio man the highways there are terrible it's tolls everywhere and construction all over so we were like in another like line to get through a toll booth and we were we were getting really bored and we were getting kind of cranky but then we started talking about like teaching Ugh, that's all we ever talked about um and Ben was like, you know, Tina, really what we're doing is we're teaching a cycle that's like, it has five parts, so it's kind of like a star, and then you just kind of go around the star. And I was like, that's pretty smart there, Ben. He's very apt with a metaphor, that Slavic. So, um, this is what he said, and we kind of refined it later. Um, so, it is like a star, and it has five parts, okay? And it is kind of like a cycle that you can go around, and it, it's kind of like, this idea of reading around a workshop where you've got these different activities that keep going. Um, so, the first, hmm, I think I'm gonna bust out my own one first. Okay. Um, so, I'm just giving you this as a preview because I'm about to like basically take you through like activities that would line up with every part of this cycle, okay? So, the first part of the cycle Originally we called it other things, but we simplified it because we wanted it to be useful for all kinds of different activities, no matter like who they came from. So maybe the activities that fill these parts of the cycle in uh, come from me, Ben, whatever. Um, but there's all kinds of people out there who have all kinds of ideas. But the problem, I think, is not that we have bad, nobody has bad ideas. Like <coughs> all these CI people have amazing ideas. There's like great ideas coming out from everybody all the time and like it's growing a lot in the last few years there's been a lot more people sharing it's that like you need to be able to think like where do I put this in my sequence of instruction where would this fit in like how do how can this be more called in my classroom mm -hmm. so um, originally this was just like we would say like create a character or whatever but um, not everybody's creating characters but everybody is creating something So the first thing that I think of when I'm like planning this sequence is like creating something. Um, so this is like oral, it's like an oral experience. And from the kids' perspective, it's oral input, what they hear. So you're like creating something in, you know, a conversation, it's like oral or aural and people are listening and participating um, in some type of activity that creates some type of new knowledge or a new experience. Like, we're literally gonna talk about the calendar and the weather maybe, and make a little like cocktail party small talk. That's the first thing we're gonna do. It's super easy, That's, I like to start with that because it's very simple. And it's super engaging and personal, right? Because everybody likes talking about themselves and we actually spend a lot of our life talking about the weather. Um, 
Um, so this could be all kinds of different things that you're creating. Like that's sort of like a class discussion. You're just gonna be creating some new knowledge about what people are doing in their life or what they think about the weather, or what day of the week they like the best, whatever. Um, there's a bunch of other things that could go in here though. Like you could create a character. Well, all these different things down here are basically different ways to do more creating. So like card talk, where everybody has a card with a picture on it and you talk about their different interests. Or like a one word image where you make a character. Or like story, so you're creating a story. Or like maybe you're creating some more knowledge for them about culture or you're like telling them a story from the target culture. And there's tons of other things to do. So myself, I would say about 75 to 80% of what I see out there on the internet getting shared would probably fall into this. And I think that's a big part of the problem in the world of CI teaching is that we're always creating with our kids. It's like every single day we have to be on stage, making something new, being creative, being funny, making jokes, making sure everybody's engaged, and it becomes very tiring. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever feel mm -hmm. like it? Yeah. <sighs> so like a little fact about myself is that um, I'm really energetic, but I also like live in Oregon and my whole life, even before I lived in Oregon, I've had bouts of depression, um, even in Georgia. I don't know why I moved to Oregon. Because, like, I was already like depressed in Georgia um, <laughs> during the winter, where we got like a whole hour or more of sun, and like we actually saw the sun from September to June. Um, so then I moved to Oregon. It's like the depression capital of the nation. So um, you know, whatever. But we have good food and beer, right? And maybe that's why we legalized weed so quick. Um, we need some. I don't know. Um, so, I can't do this every day. Like, even though I'm super energetic and I love theater and I love acting and stuff, I, I can't create with my class every single day. And it gets tiresome for them, too. Because they're coming in every day and it's like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? That, that feeling of not really knowing how class might go for a lot of our kids who come from, like, backgrounds of, like, chaos. You know, a lot of kids have really chaotic lives, you know, for whatever reason. Um, they're couch surfing because their family got evicted, or um, they're being bullied, or like you know their parent may be incarcerated, or somebody's sick. Who knows, right? Maybe they're taking care of all their siblings because both their parents work three jobs. Um, a lot of kids have a very chaotic life, and they they don't know day to day like how their actual life is going to go. So good to come into class and know that it's going to be calm and it's going to like you know follow a sort of predictable routine. So. Um, this is where I would say most of the things are, are coming. So like most of the activities that are coming out would fall. And so I would really say that the rest of this is what is lacking. And also like the sequence of how to structure it is really lacking. And by the way, don't you think it's so much more powerful to be watching me make this with you? Because yes. don't you really want to know what's on the rest of the song? <laughs> <laughs> and if I have like a, a graphic of this or like a PowerPoint of this that I have projected, you guys would be like, whatever, okay, I know. But you like I can just I can just feel it. Like tell me what's the next one. Because this is like 80% of what's out there. So what's the other missing piece? So that's just a testament to like the power of like creating something with you guys. <laughs> um, so the next part um, is to review. So basically you created something and then you're just kind of going back and like giving more input on the same thing. So this is still more oral. <coughs> um, sometimes, a lot of the times actually, this is also with like a visual aid. I saw somebody recently who spelled visual aid with an E, which an aid with an E is like a person. So I was like picturing like this person leading this person around. Like, <laughs> like, um, so like, for instance, t today, um, we're gonna <coughs> play the mysterious person game. So that is like a way for the kids to hear all the language, not all, but some, a good chunk of the language that you use here, um, again, but like in a different, context in a different activity and with a visual aid. Because here, you'll notice today, um, I'm not writing every single thing down. So they're not really like seeing it. There was like kind of a visual aid involved, but anyway. 
you'll see. Um, so a lot of the times, actually, this visual aid, though, is student artwork for me, the way I run my classroom. Um, so like when we do a one-word image, um, you should, ooh, where's the, yeah, you should go get some of those one-word images um, later. Yeah, during I, I love lunch. Um, so like when we do a one-word image, we have like kids drawing, like we have student artists, and um, then like we have this visual aid to share with them later. Um, another way to review is to give them a quick quiz. So that's just quizzing them over what you just talked about. So I want to say something else about why I really think this cycle is super powerful. It's because, like, think about the number of, like, repetitions that they're getting. Like, they heard the language one time when they were just, like, talking about it, and then they hear it, like, another time here. And maybe they could even hear it three times because you might do a couple of these things, right? You might do a quick quiz and then the next day look at the artwork. You might do a quick quiz and then the next day play the mysterious person game. Um, so, because I don't let them see the artwork till the next day. And I want to say a little bit about that too, about the repetitions. Because when I first learned about CI, it was with TPRS, and I learned how to like circle and like try to get all these repetitions of like the language that I was using for the day and by asking all these questions. Anybody ever took, taken like a circling practice? So you're supposed to ask like a yes or no question. It, it sounds kind of like this. Um, what's your name? Jennifer. Jennifer. And uh, uh, what's your favorite food? Oh, Mexican. Okay, so you'd be like this. Hey, Jen likes Mexican food. Um, does Jen like Mexican food? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay, so Jen likes Mexican food. Good, good job. She, Jen likes Mexican food. And does Jen like Mexican food or Chinese food? Mexican. Mexican. Good. Jen does not like Chinese food. Do you like Chinese food? Yeah. Oh, Jen likes Chinese food. <laughs> Jen likes Chinese food and Mexican food. And now does Jen like Chinese food and Mexican food and uh, Italian. Martian food? <laughs> no. 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 Okay, so Jen does not like Martian food. Do you like Martian food? No. She does not like Martian food. Um, Jen likes Mexican food, and does she just like Mexican food? No. But she likes Mexican food and Chinese food. Okay, so you get the point, right? And uh, the idea was like, talk about Jen, and then like, we want to talk about somebody else, and so you're trying to like get all these repetitions. That's all fine and dandy, except for like, after like a few months like that, I would always find my classes are kind of like, oh my god, like, Ms. Hargan, I move on. Like, we totally know that Jen likes Mexican and Chinese yeah, food. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so you're not really like exchanging any new information, and it, it, at first, like, there's that honeymoon period, right? And for us, CI people, the honeymoon period lasts a long time. Like, we're lucky, because it's all about them, and it's so fun and engaging that they will like hang with us for a while, even if, they, if you know, you're repeating and repeating and repeating. But then by like March or February or January or December, depending on the group of kids, um, a lot of us were like, they were kind of burnt out on like hearing all these repetitions. So what I like about this is that like, I'm not trying to squeeze all my repetitions into one thing. Because that was also what like, when I learned TPRS, like it was the vehicle was mostly creating, creating stories day after. And there's other parts of TPRS too, but like the main vehicle was like creating these stories. Now stories are great, I love stories, but like I, I can't keep that up like yes. throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And plus, trying to squeeze like all of the reps of the language into this one experience mm -hmm. got really tedious for me and it made it hard. And like when I'm like depressed, I get really like fragile feeling and like I get really sensitive to like anybody like not liking what I'm doing. Like my mm -hmm. kids even. Mm -hmm. Like I mean I don't I don't really want to be my kid's friend. I don't really care if they like me, but in the moment, like especially if I'm not feeling good, like if they like are like looking like I hate what's going on right now, <laughs> it affects me. Okay, well, let's just put it that way. I'm not just gonna power through like everybody being like, God, Miss Hargan, we totally get it. Jen likes Mexican food. <laughs> they don't say it. They say it like this. <laughs> Like to their friend, you know, so boring in here. I used to like this class. I used to. Um, so I, that's that's another thing I like about this is like the language keeps coming back, but it's in different like contexts, and so you're able to repeat that language like over the course of more like three or four days, instead of like so much at one time. It just makes it easier for me, and you know, for a lot of other people that I talk to as well. Okay, so the third part, um, this is where like kind 
kind of like this is all oral, right? Or oral for the kids. So this is kind of where the literacy part comes in, like the writing. Um, so this is their writing part. Writing, writing. Um, so now they're getting, you know, written input. Obviously, they're getting some reading input. And they're also the way I do the, my writing. Um, we do it together. So, like, write and discuss. Like, I'm writing. We're all discussing. I'm writing what they say. So they're not just getting reading input, they're also getting more oral input because we're discussing it. So like before they see it getting written down, it would be like, hey guys, let's write about Jen. So um, does Jen, okay, Jen <laughs> likes. Um, does Jen like Mexican food? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Mexican food. And uh, does she like uh, just Mexican food? No. 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 What else does she like? Chinese. Chinese. Uh, Jen likes me Mexican food and Chinese food. Comma, but has Jen ever tried Martian food? No, no, no. Yes. No, no, no. She doesn't like it. Oh! <laughs> but Jen ate Martian food. And did she like it? No. no. She did not like it. Um, so <coughs> you would see, you'll see this later. We'll do it in French. But the language is like oral, but it's like coming into this writing. So you're like hearing it and seeing it written down. So it's reading and oral. That's one way to do the writing for your kids. Now, sometimes I do write for them. Like I'll take whatever we talked about in class and I'll take it home and I'll write it, like I'll make a text for them based on what we've done. And I used to do that like all the time. That was, I think when I, think when I took my first TPRS training, they said that, like write down the story for the kids and bring it to them. Um, which is fine, but um, <coughs> it takes time. <coughs> And once again, when you're doing this writing and discussing, it's the same as like you making a star. It's happening right there in front of them. So it's using that truism about education, which is that you know if things are getting built in front of them, they remember it better. So I really find, and so many other teachers who have started using this write and discuss strategy, um, I find that like they are learning an amazing amount of vocabulary in that. I just say it once or twice, and it's like, how do you guys remember that? Yeah. Because it's really like sticking in their heads. However, I will say that sometimes I'll do the write and discuss with them. And you can't write and discuss like every single detail. You, you usually can't even tell the whole story because kids get bored. So I usually only do like four to six sentences with the class before like I'm kind of monitoring them. If they get, if they start to look like really bored, I just move on to something else. I'm not going to like flog a dying. <laughs> <laughs> until it was actually dead. Um, so sometimes if, if it was so compelling, like if this part was like so much fun, or if it's like some type of content that I want them to learn and I really want to have all the details for them, or it's like some kind of, like I want to put in some language like that we're supposed to learn or that I think will be good for them to learn. Pardon me. I'll just take this home, like the little, the, the little like five or six sentences that we wrote, and I'll like fancy it up, and I'll type it up with like more, more stuff in it. Either like more facts about history or geography or whatever, or more words, or more like, like if I want to like put a lot of transitional words in there or whatever, you know, whatever I want to expose them to, I'll sometimes take this home, but I don't do it all the time anymore. And so then we can take those, both of those, and go into the next phase, which, oh, just teachers, take a guess. What do you think the next phase is? He just wrote. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> um, so that is obviously more reading input. Um, and there's tons of ways to, uh, you know, do reading work with, oh, by the way, let's just think about the number of repetitions that they've gotten. So they got repetitions of this again in the the talking about it and they also saw it getting written down so any language that's important enough to like be you know integral to understanding whatever was happening in this creative art has kept on coming back and kept on coming back and then if you did if you took it home and made another reading you know that's like six to seven to eight to nine times because you can like you could be like oh it just so happens that some really important vocabulary came up in here, like that, I, or I just 
so happened to see that I can add in some like really good vocabulary. This is a really great place for me to put in the school subjects vocabulary or the um, <laughs> bless you or the winter sports vocabulary or whatever it is that you're supposed to teach, right? And so you can like sneak that in like a million more times. Like you can repeat it a bunch in that in that reading that you make out there. So you can you can really repetition that up if you want to. Um, so then in the reading, you know, let's just go with the, the conservative estimate. You know, they're probably getting six or seven um, more times of repetition. In fact, I would go so far as to say maybe eight or nine. And you could go, you could have like up to infinity times of repetition because, well, I mean, let's be real, not infinity, but close. Um, because there's so many different like options that you can do with the reading. Um, today, I don't think I'll have time to show you like all of the options. Um, ben has like 21 of them. Um, and there's there's way more. I mean, Martina Bex has like a million ways to like work with a reading. I mean, Martina Bex is like a fountain of ideas and people. She's created a lot of new people. She <laughs> has five kids. They're adorable. I actually got to meet her kids last summer. They're great kids. They're so sweet. But it's like a little school. I know she quit teaching, but she just couldn't stop having a class of kids around. <laughs> Um, so the ones I'm probably going to be able to show you over the um, three days are, these are my favorite ones. These are the ones that I come back to again and again and again, um, is to uh, choral translate, like translate, and talk about the grammar. So those kind of go together, and you'll see later. Mm -hmm. um, and then to do reading from the back of the room. Read back from the of the room. Anyway, read from the back of the room, okay? Um, it's like, you'll see later, it's like having a little discussion about the, the text with the kids, but you're standing in the back. Um, and then reader's theater. And sometimes those kind of combine too. They can be kind of separate. And then there's a bunch more reading options. I mean, there's tons of more things that you can do with the reading. So if the reading's really cool, and it's like got a lot of energy behind it, sometimes I'll spend like two days on doing things with the text. Mm -hmm. There's tons of different options. Oh, actually, should have said this to you. The um, sort of a err strategy underneath all of this is that I read it out loud. So that they get to hear the text that they made. Because over here it's kind of choppy, right? It's like, did she like this? Did she like that? Yes, she liked this. Now, did she go to Mars or did she not go to Mars? Yes, she went to Mars. So it's more like um, back and forth. And then I really think it, it deserves to just be read out loud in the language to them after they like, create it. Okay. Um, so then the final one is like just extension activities. And uh, Martina is like the queen of extension activities. So if you want some extension activities, you want some more ideas, um, please go find, please go find her blog and her resources that she has out there because she's got a million ideas. She's so creative. I don't know where she, I really don't know where she finds them. Um, but like the go-to extension activities that I'm going to show you, um, myself, personally, I'm kind of like a if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of gal. Like like. Mad propers to Martina, right? Because she's got so many ideas. And like, maybe my ideas aren't really gonna work for you, but what I would say, and maybe hers work better, but what I would say is I would find, like look, there's like five things that I do. That's pretty much all I do. Like maybe on a weird wild hair day, I'll try something else. <laughs> but usually this is what I do. And you would think like, well, don't the kids get bored of like doing the same thing over and over? They don't. They don't even, it hardly even crosses their mind that we're doing the same thing all the time because we always create this content together. Mm -hmm. So like this is something that's interesting to them. Mm -hmm. And so they're just like, oh good, we're just like keeping on working with our taco that we made. Or <laughs> we're keeping on talking about, you know, her crazy trip to Mars. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't even like blip on their little kid radar screen. Because like every few days you're like loading it up with some more new stuff and taking it through the cycle. And then, another benefit of this is at the beginning, when I'm telling them how to do all these things, I have, 
I just talk to them in English. I'm sorry. Actful does not say we have to talk 100% of the time in the language. They say none. And at the beginning of the year, it's probably for me more like 85 to 80. Because I have to do all this stuff. Like, I have to say, like, when we create a character, this is what we're going to do, right? We're going to use our imaginations. We're going to imagine, uh, what do you guys want to imagine? A taco, great. We're going to pretend like there's a taco here. Those kids are going to be drawing it back there. Now, be sure you draw your taco really big. So, like, I'm setting all this stuff up. But then later, if we do that a lot, if we always do this, like reading from the back of the room, all I have to do is have a text up here and walk back here, and they know what I'm going to do. I don't have to say, like, turn around and look at me back here. And you can always be sure to look back there if you need to get the answers, but just listen to me. We're going to have a discussion. You're going to feel really proud. Of like, that's what I say the first time. But then after that, if I do the same activity over and over, I don't even have to set it up anymore. I just walk back here, and they're like, that's what we do. And like the quick quiz. I do a quick quiz at the end of like every day. So I just go stand in my quick quiz spot, which for me was on top of the desk in the back of the room so I could see them. <laughs> <laughs> there are some videos of me online like standing on the desk. I don't know if you can tell I'm standing on the desk, but I think you can because sometimes I reach up and touch the ceiling. <laughs> You might have thought if you met me in person for the first time that I'm actually really tall. Like not that tall. I was just I was standing on a desk. Um, so like I just go back there and stand on the desk, and they, they know like that's her desk standing spot, and it's time for us to take a quiz. So I don't have to like give directions a billion times either. And that's like, a question that comes up a lot for teachers. Like, golly, because you know, if you're always creating something new every single day, there's always a new set of directions to give every single day. It's like, okay, here's how to play this game. Here's how to do this activity. Now here's how to get with this partner, and then you gotta do it with that partner. And oh, it's too true. Yes. <laughs> um, so. I do have like some very go-to extension activities that I tend to do over and over, but then again, of course, by like March, April, May, I'm kind of reaching to the bottom of the bag and like pulling out the last you know, few fun tricks to get us through to the end of the year because people, they get bored, even with a wonderful, amazing teacher like me. So at the end of the year, you know, I'm pulling out all the stops, but for you know, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, like I'm going to the tried and the true as long as I can. So there's all kinds of those, but what I'll show you today um, are two that I really love. Um, one is uh, Deep Day. It's basically a dictation. So they write down what they hear, and then you show them what you said. It's kind of like they get to see how they, it's like taking that oral input and writing it, and then they're like, oh, I see that in French you don't hear half the letters, but when she showed it to me, there was like an ENT at the end of that thing, I didn't even hear it. Uh, and then running dictation is kind of a extension of that. Um, this guy, Mike Pito, is a good friend of mine. He's awesome. Anybody know Mike? He's great. Um, he, on his blog, if you search Mike Pito blog, you'll find it. Um, he has this um, comic book template. And so he'll send that home with the kids for homework to like extend um, whatever it was that they created or whatever and talked about that week. He'll put it in this comic book with no pictures and they just take it home and illustrate it. And then he's got like books, little comic books he can put out for the kids to read during like free time or not free time. Free reading time. <laughs> uh, and then I was going to tell you one more thing, but I kind of like blanked on it. DK, running dictation, comics. Oh, yeah. Homework. Um, I'm not a big believer in homework. And I always tell my kids at the beginning of the year, like, I don't give homework. And they're like, yay. Because guess what? They don't like it either. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I don't, I personally think, I wish nobody gave me homework except like read a book. Um, but that's not how most teachers operate. And some people are required to give homework. So, this is the homework that I give. I give it anyway. I tell them I don't give homework, but then I give this homework. It's because it's so easy and they enjoy it. Um, so, the homework that I give is where I'll take something that we wrote during the week and I'll send it home on like Thursday. And I'll tell them that by Monday, they need to bring it back with a note from somebody at home that they read it out loud to in English or whatever their first language is at home. 
So they take home like the French reading or the Spanish reading, and then they basically translate it for somebody at home. And then at the bottom, they have to write a note, like their mom, dad, whoever, um, has to write a note. I tell them it has to be somebody over the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So not your little brother or your best friend. Um, unless your best friend's really old, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so they, they read it out loud in English. It's just short, you know. And then the person writes like a note about what they think of their skills. And usually the notes are so great. They're like, I can't believe that little, you know, Sheila can read so well in French. It's only October, she just started. So this makes the kids feel good. It's like really easy. And it's very good advertising for my program, right? Because the parents are like, wow, I just, my kid is learning so much Spanish. I just can't believe what they're learning. Um, so those are some great extension activities, but there's there's tons of more things that you can do. You can play games, you can do Kahoot, you can play quizzes, bunch of stuff, bunch of, bunch of stuff. Yes. Can I ask how you phrase that to the adult at home? Like what I say, write a sentence to say what you think about your child's um, language. Um, Um, and I try to make it really explicit to the parents, like at back to school night, like, I don't want you to write anything negative, <laughs> you know, like if they stumble over a word, like that's to be expected, you know, they're not going to know every single word, but what you're looking for is like their global comprehension of this language. Um, all right, so you guys, that was a lot of chatting, but I really wanted Betty to hear this, and I really wanted you to hear it too. Um, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to try my best to before lunch, what time is it? 11.07. So in about 50 minutes, I'm gonna do my very best to try to very quickly get you through this whole cycle, which in reality would take about three days of class time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want you to know that like the small talk, like talking about the calendar, I do that every single day. It's not like I would do it one day and then wait three days to get back to it. Um, at the beginning of the year, you can I can get my kids to talk about the calendar for like 20, 30 minutes because they're like, whoa, this is so fascinating. I'm learning, I'm understanding German. Um, but so even though I talk about the calendar every single day for the whole year, by you know by now, it's like, hey you guys, what's the date? Cool. And what's tomorrow? Great. What's the weather? It's sunny. Well, it's not. It's, it's rain. Um, who's happy? Who hates the rain? Okay, in Oregon it's like rainy, rainy, rainy. <laughs> but then I heard teachers from LA and they're like, it's like sunny, sunny, sunny. Sunny and beautiful, sunny and beautiful, sunny and beautiful. Oh yeah, that must get boring. <laughs> so some teachers will start like um, after a few months, like if you have really pouring weather, which I don't think you guys do. Like the East Coast gets a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know, interesting mm -hmm. stuff. Um, <laughs> maybe a little too. Mm -hmm. um, some teachers who live in boring places, or even if you live in an exciting place, um, they, they start pulling up the weather report from other places. So they'll like project like the weather report from Madrid or the weather report from Costa Rica or the weather report from Frankfurt or whatever. And they'll talk about that in the language. Okay, so we're gonna stop that video and you are gonna talk to your partner, okay, for about two minutes. But here's what you're not gonna do. You're not gonna like write down your own notes. You're gonna ask your partner, what did you just learn? And you're gonna have them say 